Good afternoon, everybody. The severe weather event that we talked about in our live briefing this morning is well underway now across the upper Midwest, and we're really watching this HP supercell near the Rochester, Minnesota area. This is in the far southeastern part of the state. It has had some broad rotation here and there. It looks like it is trying to get a little bit less supercellular with time. This is actually the 50 frame loop and you can really see that mesocyclone organize and then get less organized as it moves over the northern portion there of rochester look at it ramp up near rockdale on approach to to rochester and uh this severe thunderstorm warning does say that a tornado is possible and it's because of that organizing mesocyclone that was coming in from the southwest really started to organize near sergeant area there you can see it lifting through vernon rockdale and uh, that mesocyclone of this HP supercell likely was associated with some damaging winds as well. And it does have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect uh, in another two minutes. But I do expect that severe thunderstorm to be extended because it is a relatively long-lived mesocyclone there. And even if it is a little bit elevated or just a little bit behind that frontal boundary, it could be associated with some damaging uh, straight line winds as well. But I do think that this storm does have potential to pull in some inflow uh, there. Right now it is uh, on the north side of Rochester and that mesocyclone has weakened just a little bit. But I am watching some renegade storms off to the north as well, just to the northeast of the Red Wing area. Look at that storm that really tried to get organized. This is that renegade that we were talking about earlier. Right about there near Goodhue, uh, that uh, mesocyclone really got organized and then it has weakened since then. So we're, we're definitely having trouble sustaining those really long-lived mesocyclones of this event. But I do think that the tornado threat could reinvigorate here across northwestern Wisconsin. That's where the environment is most favorable for that tornado threat. This storm right here is the one that I was just showing you. The mesocyclone earlier when it was ramping up. Right now it's just to the west of Maiden Rock. Right near the Wisconsin-Minnesota border. And... The latest scan looked a little bit better. It looked a lot more bean shape on that last radar reflectivity image. Uh, let's take a look at the velocity and see what this thing is doing. I had to put on my glasses. Just got some soap in my eye. Barely see out of my right eye there. But here you can see that mesocyclone to the west of Maiden Rock, right over the Mississippi River. So this is right over uh, the Wisconsin-Minnesota border. There, this is the lacrosse radar, but you can see a pretty broad mesocyclone that is yet to uh, really tighten up. Uh, but it is starting to pivot on its axis a little bit. It was more of a, a convergent couplet, and now that it's pivoting, it's becoming a little bit more rotational there. Uh, and it has crossed over to the Wisconsin side. It is moving into some better terrain as well. Uh, better wind shear, 40 knot low level jet is intensifying just to the east of these storms. And I'm also watching this uh, area of rotation to the south of Woodville, Wisconsin as well. Uh, this is storm relative velocity out of, out of uh, La Crosse. And you can definitely see this very sharp gradient on radar reflectivity. That means that its inflow is certainly ramping up. You can see a pair of supercells here kind of clustered together uh, just to the west of the Emerald area. Uh, but that storm near Woodville uh, do, seems to have some pretty deep rotation on it, uh, starting to get a little bit more organized. And it's this mode up here in northwestern Wisconsin that I was most concerned about, even from our briefing this morning. Uh, the cold front up there is a lot more north-south oriented, so the southwest to northeast storm oceans should be able to move off of that boundary a little bit more easily. And uh, the low-level jet is supposed to ramp up off to the north here across northwestern Wisconsin. There is a severe thunderstorm watch in effect, but the Storm Prediction Center did reintroduce that 5% area for tornadoes across northwestern Wisconsin. That includes Rice Lake, Eau Claire area, Phillips, Rhinelander, uh, kind of that little area right there. Uh, that is the most favorable area for tornado potential in terms of environment. That's where the low-level jet is forecast to ramp up. That's where the uh, zero to one kilometer storm relative helicity is expected to be strongest, about 250 to 300 out there. And uh, there's also a southern mode that we need to watch down into I uh, Iowa as well. And central Iowa has had a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings. They're a little bit more linear down here. But this storm has tried to show some supercellular characteristics to the south of Des Moines. And uh, here you can kind of see that bean-shaped supercell structure here to the south of Indianola. 
Iowa. And that storm is definitely trying to pull in a little bit of inflow and develop a mesocyclone to the west of Liberty Center. Nothing that's too intense to trigger a tornado warning yet with that storm, but you can definitely see that rotation. And a little bit of some enhanced inflow there crossing Highway 69 just to the west of Liberty Center. More damaging straight line winds associated with that storm. But we do have this new severe thunderstorm warning up here near Charles City. Uh, this storm in northeastern Iowa is also quite interesting. I know a majority of the storm chasers out there are on uh, this storm in northeastern Iowa. And we'll go over to the lacrosse radar to get a better look at this storm. And it does look just a little bit outflow dominant right now, but I bet in person it probably has a nice base and a wall cloud very close to Floyd, Iowa there. That's in the northeastern portion of the state. And uh, then you can see some convective elements here along its flanking line trying to feed into this storm. A lot of clean air out ahead of it, a good clean environment out ahead of this storm for it to move into. And let's uh, take a look at the radar loop just to see how much of a right mover this storm is. And it really needs to turn right, I think, to uh, develop tornado potential. Charles City, Iowa, you're about to get hit by this storm. You can definitely see that there's a, a strong low-level jet because of the shallower convection out ahead of these storms. Uh, this storm right here is deeper and extends deeper into the troposphere. Therefore, it taps into that southwest and northeast mid and upper tropospheric flow. Uh, but these shallower storms out near the Cresco area, northeastern Iowa out there, they don't extend as high up into that jet stream into the mid and upper levels of the troposphere. So those storm, those convective elements are moving more south to north, and that's the direction of that low-level jet that is intensifying ahead of these storms, especially from northeastern Iowa up into northwestern Wisconsin, strengthening as you go north. And uh, it does look like these storms from Rochester down to northeastern Iowa are having a tendency to definitely go linear. Uh, this one near Rochester, you may have some tree limbs down across town. Uh, that dying mesocyclone went through the northern part of Rochester. That might have been associated with some stronger winds. That mesocyclone has since weakened. And then you can definitely see the uh, convective elements filling in off to the south of Rochester. All the way down through Ostrander, you're about to get hit by sub-severe storms. And then you've got a shallower storm here lifting up through Riceville, Iowa, uh, with that low-level jet. I'm still watching for the development of renegades out here out here uh, near the Waterloo area. Uh, definitely could be the development of supercell storms out here within the open warm sector. You could certainly see these start to intensify just to the southeast of Waterloo, down to the north of LaPorte City. That one's trying to be, uh, develop some supercell characteristics, and I know some storm chasers are on this area too, this convective mode out near Waterloo, and uh, there have been reports of a pretty laminar looking wall cloud and convective base and even some banding to that uh, cloud base there, uh, the, the, the base of the storm suggesting that it is developing a mesocyclone. So I am going to watch that area for renegades near Waterloo as well. And uh, we are scanning higher up in these storms. We could use the Waterloo radar there and uh, see just exactly how they look structurally. Des Moines. Sorry, we are using lacrosse radar right now. So definitely the evolution of a textbook fall severe weather event. A lot of times you get a forward propagating linear, uh, pseudo-linear, quasi-linear convective system like this one. Uh, moving fast, you have a relatively surging cold front as well. You get those northwesterly winds back behind this cold front uh, trying to uh, undercut uh, that convection just a little bit but then out ahead of this front you have an intensifying low level jet out of the south at about 30 to 40 knots uh, pushing 50 knots though up there near the lake superior shoreline and uh, that could be what develops a tornado threat let's take a look at the duluth radar here see how some of these storms are looking this is a little north of the instability axis up uh, near spooner hawthorne uh, east of Duluth and to the west of Ashland. I've done a speaking event at the meteorology program here at the University of Wisconsin in Ashland, a very beautiful place right on the Lake Superior shoreline there. And off to your west, you likely have a shelf cloud that is starting to organize and could have some near severe winds with it too. You can see little kinks within this line. Definitely some strong low level shear within this line, even though you're a little north of the ample surface base instability there. It's leading to uh, more of a QLCS pattern, but you can certainly see the wavy behavior with these lines. 
And the strongest wind speeds are associated with these little miniature bow echoes right there. You can see one just to the northwest of Spooner, Wisconsin there. Those are associated with some of the strongest winds. And then the kinks within this line, those are the areas where you can get mesovortices to develop and even get damaging tornadoes that can develop within the kinks of those lines. They start to pull in instability. They start to pull in inflow. And uh, they'll develop along the leading gust front. They pull an inflow and then they'll occlude kind of back behind the main mesoscale gust front of this convective line. And uh, I've seen it happen. I've actually intercepted a Q QLCS tornado that tore through Meridian, Mississippi, causing EF2 damage out there. And uh, it was crazy. You could actually see the whole clear slot. You could see the occluded tornado cyclone above it and then a little cone underneath and you could just see violent motion beneath it but you could certainly see the kink in the leading gust front almost like the intersection of the forward flank gust front with the rfd so now i'm watching this area just to the east of rochester marion pleasant grove areas could be some tornado potential with this too you can see some kinks within the line and uh, even some of these structures trying to preserve super cellular characteristics a little bit more than others, especially this one just to the east of Rochester. But really, uh, this bow right here is associated with damaging straight line winds coming into Marion, Pleasant Grove areas there. Uh, certainly could be associated with some big wind. And it is possible that that northern circulation there to the southwest of Viola could intensify and develop a tornado cyclone. Uh, but it is just kind of a supercell right now with uh, producing some enhanced damaging straight line winds. I'm also watching this storm, though, to the east of Racine. That's in Minnesota, southeastern Minnesota. And a lot of storm chasers are on these storms. I'm not sure if they're on this kind of linear outflow dominant type of a storm northeast of Charles City that maybe might move in to the low-level jet and develop a tornado threat. But the way that it looks right now, I think that this storm is actually behind the cold front there and i'm really watching these renegades out near waterloo kind of a cluster of more isolated storms no mesocyclones really intensifying within that just yet but that's an area that i'm watching relatively closely there some inflow enhanced inflow into some of these storms like this one up near waterloo this one to the east of waterloo as well could be quite interesting no tornado warnings have been issued yet. Uh, this storm to the southwest of Des Moines had a long-lived severe thunderstorm warning. Also a, a severe thunderstorm warning down into northern Missouri. But the Storm Prediction Center ended up dropping the 5% from when we did the briefing this morning and then uh, added a 2% tornado risk, but then just reintroduced that 5% tornado threat. So let me look at the surface map and see how some of this moisture verified up there boy the surface maps are not very complete there's only a few surface obs on on here and it looks like uh, the three kilometer nam was a little bit closer 67 up there 65 into central wisconsin let me pull up the internet Thank you, everybody, for joining me for this live severe weather briefing. Mainly severe thunderstorm warnings. There is a non-zero chance of a tornado threat, mainly in northwestern Wisconsin, though. And I'm going to show you why right now. But only a couple little obs out there in Wisconsin. But you got 73 over 67, 72 over 65. So really not much in the way of surface heating out there today during the day today. And I bet that the wrap analysis is going to reflect that. There you can see those severe thunderstorm watches. Nicely backed winds though into northwestern Wisconsin there. And decent surface base instability. Actually quite surprising being uh, indicated here by the wrap. So that tells me that the three kilometer NAM certainly was onto something this morning. And as usual, the HRRR was over mixing those dew points. But you can see a nice axis of 2000 plus Cape, 
nosing into southeastern Minnesota. And uh, then you get those really nice southeasterly surface winds across northwestern Wisconsin. That's uh, definitely enhancing that wind shear, elongating those photographs. And uh, you can see that two to 300 blob of zero to one kilometer helicity over northwestern Wisconsin. That's definitely the area to watch for tornado potential to develop. That's where the core of the strongest low level jet is located. Over top of southeasterly surface winds, due southerly winds at 45 knots, pumping into northwestern Wisconsin. So it does appear that that area right along the nose of the zero to one kilometer EHI axis, and you have a decent environment extending down into northeastern Iowa as well, but certainly maximized right near the nose into northwestern Wisconsin as we anticipated. Look at those southeasterly winds. There is a little bit of convective inhibition nosing up into some of those storms, and that's why it does have that kind of Q wavy QLCS look to it. But I do think there's going to be the uh, evolution of some supercell storms out here as well. The, the cold front is more north-south. You basically have a southern extension of that surface low. The winds behind the cold front are more westerly. So it is trying to behave more of like a Pacific cold front pushing into northwestern Wisconsin as well. But it is possible that this area could be north of that instability axis too and mainly strong low-level wind shear. And the main instability axis is nosing into southeastern Minnesota there, eastern Iowa. Cape even goes up further south down into northern Missouri as well. And this convective line is expected to peak in a couple of hours, so about 6, 7 p.m. And look at those supercells down into eastern Iowa too. Watch that area because as you get a little bit closer to sunset, 23, 0, Z, that low-level jet magnitude will increase above 40 knots. And I do think that moving into eastern Iowa, there is a, a southern mode that could materialize, kind of a bimodal severe weather event. But look at that squall line marching east through northern into central Wisconsin. Looking at the wind shear. See how the wind shear expands across northern Wisconsin ahead of that convective line. And eventually that wind shear also expands down into eastern Iowa out ahead of that storm and we do have a tornado warning now so let me pop over to radar we do have a tornado warning I'm sure it's one of the storms that we were looking at yep it is up uh, in northern northwestern Wisconsin it was the storm that we were watching that was to the northeast of Red Wing. Now it's on the Wisconsin side to the north of Plum City, heading toward Ogal, Ogalley, Comfort, Downsville, Wisconsin here. And there's the, the rotation right back near Plum City right now. Pull up velocity. And it does have a pretty strong mesocyclone. You can see a very large storm relative inflow zone right over Plum City. A lot of times before you get tornadoes, you'll get this development of a really large storm relative inflow zone ahead of the storm. And then you get the development of a large convergent zone, a large area of potential vorticity. And then it'll tighten up into a tornado vortex there if it continues to mature and develops tornado, tornado potential. But this storm is right. Not surprisingly, it's within an environment favorable for tornadoes too. About two to 300, zero to one kilometer storm relative helicity. So it's not surprising that these storms are going dominant. And even this lead supercell here, kind of a younger storm developing within the inflow region of the tornado worn storm, even that one has a mesocyclone. So it's just physics. When you have an environment that is favorable at producing tornadoes, then they develop mesocyclones and they often do produce tornadoes. I'm going to watch this inflow area down near Lund, Wisconsin as well. And I'm watching this renegade storm out toward Durand and Lima. Kind of broad rotation with those storms. Strongest rotation near Plum City, Wisconsin right now. I don't think that there is a tornado at that, but there is uh, the potential of, uh, of that storm becoming tornadic. Let's take a look at the uh, correlation coefficient. I'm wondering if that's debris or what the hell that is down there. Probably just an area of in between those two storms. Contamination of some kind. Yeah. 
But that's usually what a debris signature would look like on radar, but you have to look at the other products, reflectivity, storm relative velocity, to really determine if it is a debris signature. Now, if that was located near Plum City, I'd be freaking out because then it's associated with a mesocyclone. It would be associated with damage being caused in Plum City, but that is not the case right now. This is still a radar indicated tornado warning. That is in north central Pepin County, southeastern Pierce, southwestern Dunn until 515. Located over Plum City. Not seeing any reports on it yet, but we do know that it is in an environment favorable for tornadoes. Two to three hundred, zero to one kilometer storm relative felicity out there. We're just looking at that wrap at that wrap model data. And I think this could be the first of many tornado warnings coming from this mode to the west of Eau Claire. Out near Menominee as well, this cluster. You'll probably include these up near Turtle Lake, barren areas. Because really this environment across northwestern Wisconsin is quite favorable for tornadoes. Yeah, I'm more of a fall allergy kind of person. But also the tinctures that I take, I have a little bit of a subtle allergy to that. Helps keep me calm and level though, so I can break down this radar without getting too overexcited. But my sinuses are pretty clear, can taste good. My taste has definitely come back all the way. I do need to begin an exercise campaign. I keep starting it and then a hurricane pops up. I'll go three days in a row. And uh, then I have to restart again. And now I'm getting ready for the varsity tutors class coming up. And we have these tornado warnings to break down. This one just northeast of Plum City. There's the rotation. Northeast of Plum City there. Big storm relative inflow zone on the northeastern side of Plum City. But it is a pretty broad mesocyclone so far. Nothing that's tightening up and screaming tornado right now. This is the only tornado warning, and it's the first tornado warning in northwestern Wisconsin, southwest of Eau Claire. We're also watching this one to the south of Durand that could start to rotate. It is rotating already. Uh, these new storms are starting to develop and going up rotating because the environment is so favorable from a wind shear perspective for tornado tornadoes to happen. So this storm is maturing rapidly near Durand. This will probably have a tornado warning relatively soon. You can see this hook-like appendage here of like 40 dBZ extending off to the south. Probably have a massive updraft base on this storm. But you really want to watch the kink right here, that intersection between that hook with relatively low uh, dBZ streaming into that area of reflectivity off to the north of it near Durand, Lima. So I think that that one's probably going to be the next one to go tornado warned. And actually the original tornado warned one is starting to get rained on by this storm off to its west near Plum City and Loon, you can see kind of this concave area there to the gradient of the reflectivity. I think that that's an intensifying storm that is raining into the inflow of the Plum City storm that prompted that tornado warning. But this one looks to be most textbook near Durand. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this has a tornado warning very soon near Durand. Textbook supercell. Durand is in this hail core right now. I do ex anticipate there's probably some hail up to about one inch in diameter. Can look at some of the dual pull products to try to nail down exactly where that hail core is and the differential reflectivity nails it right there. South of Durand in red. That's where the big hail is falling. Probably some severe hail too. Pushing one inch in diameter. Probably needs a severe thunderstorm warning on that or maybe even a tornado warning if that rotation continues to increase and you can see this little this blob here of enhanced storm relative inflow feeding into that storm a pretty nice mesocyclone there as well uh, located right where it should be on radar reflectivity so we'll see what that one does it might get absorbed by the plum city storm which is now basically the looned storm West of Porcupine, Wisconsin. This is kind of the new updraft base that is taking over to the south of Plum City. 
The original mesocyclone is lifting off to the northeast of Plum City up in that area. Uh, but we're watching this to the southeast of Plum City to uh, start to spin a little bit down into this region. Looking for a uh, inflow signature. Inflow would be red or yellow uh, away from the radar. I think lacrosse is off to the south here. Definitely is. Yep, there's the lacrosse radar. Looking at Minneapolis radar as well. It looks like you have a mesocyclone south of Lake City that's also trying to intensify. Definitely radar confirming this intensification of the eastern storm. If you use echo tops, you could definitely tell when a storm is gaining strength. You can look at the echo top trends and look at this one near Lima in Durand. Watch the echo tops start to increase. They're not incredible. The uh, tornado warned one on approach to the tornado warning southwest of Plum City had some pretty good echo tops up there, up about 50,000 feet, which is pretty tall for this time of year as well and you can definitely see that lima storm is trying to intensify the trend is for those echo tops to get higher and higher into the troposphere so i wouldn't be surprised if that storm also gets a tornado warning relatively soon near the lima area uh, this is a renegade storm so it's out ahead of the front a little bit too within the core of that low level jet so it looks like we've got a nice cluster of supercells starting to develop here and this is the mode of storms that I think is going to be associated with the greatest tornado potential. And you might be able to extend up the front even and include some of those storms further north. But I think that this cluster to the west of Eau Claire, as it lifts off to the northeast, is going to have you know, multiple tornado warnings. So we've already got the first tornado warning that has been issued. And I think that we'll see a lot more southeasterly surface winds beneath about a 40 to 50 knot low level jet. All the ingredients are there for a pretty uh, robust tornado potential across northwestern Wisconsin. I wouldn't, I don't know about derecho. I think that that's kind of a stretch with this one. Yeah, I take Zyrtec for the day as well for allergies. reading through some of the com comments here go lions too lions play tonight pretty excited about that lions against green bay i'm thinking about taking the lions plus the 11 and a half in that game can't blame me i'm a long time lions fan growing up in grand rapids watching barry sanders scott mitchell rodney pete so we're looking at this tornado warning southwest of Eau Claire, a long ways. And we've had a new updraft just on the southeast side of Plum City that's taken over. And it is approaching Highway 10 to the east of Plum City. So the original circulation is now embedded into the forward flank downdraft of this new supercell. And you could definitely see cyclonic curvature to that hook-like appendage. Definitely a mesocyclone is causing that, causing the rain to wrap around. The west side of that mesocyclone might even have a little donut hole right there. It's probably a stretch, but we'll call it a donut hole for now. And it, it is, the rotation is definitely ramping up on that element too. So that's starting to become dominant to the east of Plum City out there. Watch out areas like Ogal out here. Dunville. Need to keep an eye on this. Uh, this mesocyclone is moving a little bit further south. Let's go back to lacrosse radar and then we can get a cleaner look at that storm. Even though we're kind of far away, we're, you can still scan a little bit above the ground and assess how healthy is the mesocyclone even above the ground before it begins to descend. So we can see that the original mesocyclone has weakened a little bit up here in that area. And then we have a new mesocyclone that's gaining strength down just to the southwest of Ogal. So that's an area that I'm watching relatively closely. It's a pretty broad circulation right now, but if it ramp, ramps up, tightens up, then I do think that it does have a potential to produce a tornado. But the original circulation that prompted this tornado warning in the first place 
has since weakened and kind of slid off to the northern section of that warning. So I don't think that the tornado potential is that robust with that one. We have been watching this renegade storm down near Durand. It's not tightening up just yet, but it does have a pretty healthy area of storm relative inflow. We are scanning pretty high up above the ground. Keep that in mind. Kind of moving into a bit of a radar hole up here in northwestern Wisconsin. And it does look like this renegade is starting to lose strength. And we can probably confirm that with Echo Tops. No, Echo Tops still look pretty healthy up there, Red City, north of Lima. And it does look like we can see see how the trends of echo tops are here man look at that storm off to the east it definitely is going up there to the east of red cedar west of rock falls southwest of meridian wisconsin and this is all southwest of eau claire eau claire keep a close eye on this storm if it matures near red center turns off to the right then that could become a problem for eau claire that storm right, right there. We know that the environment is pretty favorable from a low-level shear perspective across northwestern Wisconsin. Two to three hundred, zero to one kilometer storm relative felicities out here moving into the northwestern part of the state. Going back to reflectivity. A couple of renegades. The tornado warning has been dropped for that Plum City circulation. The original circulation that prompted that tornado warning got rained on by this new storm down near Plum City. That one weakened just a little bit. Our renegade, favorite renegade that we've been watching out near Red Cedar, still trying to organize. It's getting some new storms developing just off to its southeastern flank that's probably interfering a little bit. And then you have a linear mode down through southeastern Minnesota. Linear down into northeastern Iowa. Watching these renegades still down through east of Waterloo now. Down at Oween, west of Independence. And so it doesn't look like these renegades are maturing. And that's not surprising looking at the uh, latest mesoanalysis really shows below about 75, 0 to 1 kilometers storm relative felicity out there. Enough bulk shear, though, for those to mature into supercells, you would think. But really, uh, here in northwestern Wisconsin, where you get those southeasterly surface winds beneath a 40 to 50 knot, one kilometer wind, you have directional shear. This is your one kilometer wind. These are your surface winds. And they create a hodograph that is nicely looped like that. So you have a southerly or south, southeasterly surface wind if your origin's right here. And then everything flips over to southwesterly. And all that area contained within the storm motion vector is storm relative felicity available for these storms to mature. It does look like these storms are starting to battle a little bit with convective inhibition at low levels. And we did see that in the uh, mesoanalysis. But once you get these QLCS patterns moving through these environments... They can be capable of developing strong, low-level mesocyclones that can drill through any shallow, stable layer. And right now I'm watching this area, circulation between Plainview and Elba. Could be an interesting area. A QLCS circulation could try to organize out of that. Some embedded supercell structures as well, but it does look like it's turning into more of a windbag event. The exception being northwestern Wisconsin. Go Lions. I'm often a Green Bay fan when they're not playing the Lions. But that's a big line, that's for sure. We have a new tornado warning. I think. Up north. Yep, there's that rotation. M Manong. Here, south of Wascott. Radar indicated circulation. There you can see that rotation very close to the Manong area. Let's try to look at something a little bit closer to this. Probably Duluth. It, yeah, Duluth is the right radar. Looks like that's the closest radar for us to view this storm. And this is that QLCS pattern that we were looking at earlier 
that looked like it was elevated above a little bit of a shallow stable layer. But the low level wind shear is so substantial that these are gonna develop tornado, tornadic circulations and likely tornadoes throughout. Look at that little RFD bulge. It's like it sent out a little bit of rain out here as well, but you can see that embedded circulation, a little inflow trying to wrap into Minong. New tornado warning and a pretty strong circulation there, quite a strong signature, stronger than the tornado warnings off to the south. A little bit of some correlation drops, but that does not look like that's a debris signature. It's more of a radar artifact. But you definitely could easily get some damaging straight line winds, tornado potential with this storm as it lifts off to the northeast from Manong, eventually approaching Highway 27 in northwestern Wisconsin as well. Washburn County Forest. Keeping a close eye on this storm. It is now north of Highway 77 to the west of Chitamo, southeast of Wascott. That's that circulation now. That's where that tornado would be located. You kind of have an effective RFD structure bulging out through Manong right there, southwesterly winds, bulging that RFD out, and then it tightens up into a tornadic circulation that is now to the north of Highway 77 to the east of 53, started to approach the Chitano area, Washburn County Forest is in the southern portion of that tornado warning, but it does look like this tornado is trying to track across the northern portion of this tornado warning. Boom, you can see that tornado warning got triggered right there near Manong. Looks like the circulation started southwest of town, lifted off to the northeast quite rapidly. It's not as strong as it was just a little bit ago, where it very easily could have produced a tornado near Manong as it was crossing Highway 53 there. But it still does have tornado potential. Looks like it's going to miss Wascott just to the south, passing to the north of Chitamo. Northeast of Manong now, so that area is where I'm watching now for tornado potential, northern Wisconsin. So it does look like we have more of a QLCS pattern starting to develop from Lake Superior all the way down into northeastern Iowa and severe thunderstorm warnings all the way down now south of Kansas City even. Eastern Kansas, we were talking about this mode, higher instability down here, like 3,000 Kate some residual bulk shear and he, those photographs even supported a non-zero tornado threat down here so this storm is located just southeast of desoto kansas down here west of lenexa south of the kansas city area here is lenexa and we can loop this to get an idea of the storm motion e oh, it's, it's turning due east and i think that these storms back into eastern kansas are going to have an easier chance at turning right and moving off to the east. You can see this prefrontal trough here. That's the actual front back behind it. Approaching Lawrence, a nice front, nice air back behind it. Definitely convecting as well there to the northwest of Lawrence. And then you have this prefrontal trough out ahead of it that is also convecting. And uh, there could even be a non-zero tornado threat with even these storms. You can see these uh, convective rolls organizing in there, parallel to the low-level winds, south-southwesterly low-level winds. So I'm going to continue to watch this tornado threat as it develops into northwestern Wisconsin. And if it gets a little bit too... Oh, we got a tornado warning now in southeastern Minnesota, everybody. We are shifting into overdrive here. We are not done yet. And here is that hook. Forestville, Caramona, Preston, you're included in that warning. There's the hook echo. And let's take a look at velocity. We're using lacrosse radar, so this is relatively close. Let's see if we've got a debris coefficient here. Drop, nope. So really it's probably based more on reflectivity with that hook coming around. There is a pretty strong RFD signature here though. Decent gate to gate wind shear near the Forestville, Minnesota area. So if you're in Forestville, you better be in your safe place. You're uh, probably rocking, could be debris, trees down out there, mass chaos, uh, could be a potential tornado very close to your location near Forestville State Park. Heading toward the Caramona area as well. Looks like there's an airport, Preston, southeastern Minnesota. 
So we now have tornado warnings going up all over the place with this setup. This one is the latest near Forestville. I'm not seeing any debris signature, but there is a decent rotational signature with that storm. And that red box is the tornado warning. Fountain, Lanesboro, St. Charles has that severe thunderstorm warning. That's a new tornado warning that just got issued in southeastern Minnesota. Here you can see the Minnesota-Iowa border. Here you can see the Mississippi River, Wisconsin, Minnesota border. And uh, we have this tornado warning that we are tracking. No debris signature yet, but the um, reflectivity sure does look ominous. Definitely shows it wrapping a hook around near the Preston area. Forestville, Caramona, there you can see that hook, cyclonically curved gradient there, sharp gradient in that reflectivity, signifying inflow getting pulled in on the north side of this. Got a spam phone call coming in. My headset. Decline. So there is that tornado warning. Fountains included in it. Caramona. Let's loop this reflectivity image and see what that... And it is definitely a supercell structure. Bulging RFD there. Look at that hook coming around. Renegade out ahead of it that's moving rapidly south to north showing you that strong low-level jet. That's a shallower storm. Not up as high into the troposphere. So it's moving more south to north. More influenced by the low-level winds than it is the mid and upper tropospheric winds. But... This storm right here that has a well-defined mesocyclone, it is causing it to turn right, propagate a little bit off to the right, and it also extends deeper into the troposphere, and uh, that's why it is moving more easterly than the storm off to its east. Looking at the echo tops, pretty high echo tops of this storm as well. The one to the north looks like it's also getting better organized. And these are moving into better wind shear, too. They're at the tail end of the more robust wind shear that is focused over northwestern Wisconsin right now, where there's no tornado warnings anymore except for the one way up north. And we got another tornado warning, northwestern Wisconsin. So we now have two tornado warnings here. These things are going nuts. So we thought these were going to be more QLCS, but they do look like they are embedded supercells. Very strong rotation, the strongest yet. West of Highway 27, far northwestern Wisconsin there. Very strong rotation, possible tornadoes starting to form. South Sandman Road, Cheney Lake Road area, out in that area right now. That's where that tornado would be located. No debris signature yet, but I mean, we're scanning... Still relatively high up in the storm, even though Duluth is quite close to these storms. We are scanning kind of high up in them. Here you can see another mesocyclone to the southeast of Wascott that we were watching. That's the original tornado warn storm. And there is this little convected blob that shows you that that RFD is really bulging out now. But the strut. No decline call. So that went off to the north, to the east of Salon Springs, well east of Salon Springs. So you don't need to be in your safe place along Highway 53. But anywhere along that convective line, dangerous environment. And this is heading toward Ashland eventually, so keep an eye on it. I know there's a lot of meteorologists and weather enthusiasts out there in the Ashland area that are watching this setup very closely. Classic fall setup, late season setup with a 40 to 50 knot south-southwesterly low-level jet. Convective line forcing even more due east storm motions within that strongly sheared environment. That even elongates those storm relative photographs even more. And uh, so th these are definitely tornadoes that are happening here in northwestern Wisconsin. And we identified this region this morning during our live weather briefing as an area with enhanced tornado potential. And we are seeing it play out now in real time. I'm using my Dell Toughbook laptop right now to break down this radar. Zooming in, here's Highway 27. It is a pretty broad mesocyclone right now, but at any scan, it can tighten up anywhere within that zone. So you kind of have this area here 
a potential vorticity, but it is trying to tighten up on the northern edge of that, but really could tighten up right in the middle. You're getting a lot of stretching above this area right now, too. There's a very strong updraft above this. Uh, this is a strong mesocyclone. You have this rotating vacuum cleaner above this circulation, basically tightening up the rotation below it. And so I'm watching this area for tornado genesis as it approaches Highway 27, far northwestern Wisconsin. This is pretty close to the Lake Superior shoreline. Capable of producing a tornado moving east at 25 miles an hour. Southwestern at Bayfield and East Central Douglas counties. Radar indicated rotation. Could impact the Iron River and Barnes areas as well. So this is the strongest radar signature that we've seen yet for tornado potential. And you can zoom out and see this pair of mesocyclones that does have tornado potential. This one to the east of Wascott. This northern one. Uh, it's also rotating. It's going to pass to the south of Iron River, it appears. Let me loop really quick. Well, close to the southern portions of Iron River there. You can definitely see that surface-based stability or convective inhibition. See all those gravity waves out ahead of that convective line? That lifts off to the north, and it's replaced by more laminar flow ahead of this line. So that tells me that there's likely some low-level... These uh, storms are becoming more surface based. There's low level instability starting to develop, lifting off to the north all the way up to the southern shore there of Lake Superior. So, those two tornado warnings we're watching very closely. Northwest Wisconsin, the most favorable environment so far for tornadoes. And then we also have this tornado warning in southwest eastern Minnesota near Preston. It looks like that one's gusting out a little bit. We still have this inflow channel from Preston up to Fountain, but that's becoming more of a outflow dominant situation, more of a damaging straight line wind type of a scenario there. Not seeing much in the way of very tight rotation with that one. The Renegade has some wave patterns there telling me that there's probably some convective inhibition from anvil shadows from that convective line off to the west. There's also that Renegade out ahead of the line. We've got to keep a close eye on those Renegades because they're developing inside the deeper wind shear especially off to the north and in northwestern Wisconsin. I would say this storm north from southeastern Minnesota northward into northwestern Wisconsin is the most favorable area for tornadoes so far, and that includes this area enclosed by Iron River, Cable, Hayward, up toward Wascott, and keep an eye on it, Ashland. I had a great time doing that speaking event up there in Ashland. We drove the Dominator up there. Lake Superior was freezing over. A uh, very fun speaking event to do up there, and that... A great meteorology program up there, University of Wisconsin at Ashland. So thank you everybody for tuning in to this breaking update with these tornado warnings happening across northwestern Wisconsin here. Let's take a look and see if we have any debris signature. I don't think that that's a debris signature down there. You usually have a debris signature that's a real tight dot that's right located right near the rotation. That's a radar artifact that you're seeing there. Maybe some RFD, though. Maybe some little debris and leaves getting kicked up. Probably some fall colors getting shredded up there in the RFD south of that circulation. That could be what that correlation drop is. Probably just a radar artifact. You can see a little bit in the northern storm, too. Lobe action. And uh, actually, that circulation in the southern tornado warning looks to be weakening a bit. This one is still healthy, though, off to the north as it approaches Highway 27. Two tornado warnings in effect, northwestern Wisconsin, and also that lone tornado warning back into southeastern Minnesota as well. So thank you, everybody, for joining me for this weather report. I'll keep these live updates going through the evening. Northwest Wisconsin, though, that is where I do expect the uh, greatest likelihood for tornadoes right pretty close to the nose of that big time low level jet. So thank you everybody for tuning in to this live weather report. Never stop chasing.